Hello guys. Welcome to my new video. Let's say you develop and launch an application. As the users grow, more data is generated. So you need to make changes to the database. So whenever you make changes to the database, will you change the application as well? There can be a situation where you will be required to make changes more frequently, but you can't keep on changing the application every time. We need to find a way, through which we can make changes at the backend without modifying or changing the application. The solution to the problem is data independence. Watch my previous videos related to database, also there are links in description. So without wasting any time let's start the video. So let's start with the definition. In the video on data abstraction, we saw that data is managed at different levels. It has different schemas. So the definition states that, data independence is the characteristic in which we are able to modify the schema at one level of database system without altering the schema at the next higher level. Let us simplify this. As we have seen previously database is represented using the three schema, or three levels of architecture in the data abstraction. The purpose of data abstraction is to achieve data independence. So what exactly happens is external schema, or view level is where the end user interacts with data using application or website. As we saw in example at the beginning we need to make changes to database frequently, in order to maintain it properly. So if there is no data independence, and if we change the physical, or internal schema we have to make changes to both of the remaining schemas. But with the data independence, if we change one of the schema, at one level we don't require to make changes to higher level schemas. For example if we modify the conceptual schema, we don't need to modify the external schema, and this is possible due to data independence. There are two types of data independence, based on three layers of abstraction. First one is physical data independence. And the second one is logical data independence. Let us see these two one by one. So let's start with physical data independence. It works between physical level, or internal schema, and logical level, or conceptual schema. It refers to the characteristic of being able to modify the physical, or internal schema without any modifications to the logical, or conceptual schema. Let's see few examples. Let's say we move the database from one location to another. That is the change in physical level. But that does not mean we make changes at conceptual schema. If we change the location of database, the tables in it does not get modified. Similarly if we change the data structure, or modify the indexes, modify the file organization technique, or change the access methods. These all are the changes we do in physical level, but with physical data independence we don't require to make changes at conceptual level. We make the data independent. This is physical data independence. Next type is logical data independence. It works between logical, or conceptual schema and view or external schema. It refers to the characteristic of being able to modify logical or conceptual schema without any modifications to the view or external schema. Let us see few examples. Let's say you add a new attribute to the table in a database. That is you modify the conceptual view. But that will not affect at view or external schema. The application the end user is using will not get modified due to the change in table, due to logical data independence. Similarly if you modify attributes, or entities in a table, or change the relationships between the table, or merging two records, or dividing one record in two, or altering the table structure. We can make all these changes in conceptual schema, without modifying, or changing the external schema. This is logical data independence. Let us see few advantages of data independence. First one is ability to improve performance. 
as we can modify or make changes to the physical or logical level without any complications, we improve the performance. Second advantage is modifications in data structure does not require modifications in application program. As we make the data independent, there are no dependencies and we can modify at one level without affecting the top level. Another one is implementation details can be hidden from the user. User is only shown the data relevant to him, all other irrelevant data is hidden from him, for better user interaction. In this video we covered what is data independence. What are the types of data independence? We saw what is physical data independence and logical data independence. Hope you all understood the concepts clearly. If you have any doubts or queries related to the topic or you have any suggestions related to the video comment them down below. If you find my video helpful, like the video and share it with your friends who need to clear these concepts. Subscribe my channel and press the bell icon to get updates about my new videos.